Thank you very much. Well, praise the Lord for what God is going to do here today. Are you there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tonight, the Lord Jesus is near you there. Your bodies, he'll roll away. Your problems, he'll take away. Every chain will be broken out of your life. And all those things, so courage, courage, courage. You know, when you're carrying a load and you're running a relay race, all the others that don't have any load to carry, but you are carrying the load and you're trying to run. Such people load carriers they never make it like other people make it that's why tonight every load every yoke every body will be taken out of you in jesus name and you need to understand that the lord is nearer to you than even your hand near to you there you will touch him he will touch you and i want to prophesy into your life you'll never be the same again let's have a word of prayer father we come before you you invited us you told us to come and that when we come you will bless our lives tremendously. And we come by your invitation. And we know everything you said, you will do. You will do. Salvation, you will give. Healing, you will give. Deliverance, you will give. Power, you will manifest. And you fulfill and perform all your promises in our lives tonight is that night here at Apoda, all over the state river state all over the nation nigeria and across all of africa asia america everywhere europe blessings falling down tonight thank you lord because we know it's done in jesus name we pray you must shout a second amen before you sit down. God bless everyone. You can sit down. Tonight, we're considering grace again. What will you talk of grace? Because the grace of God is infinite. And because the grace of God reaches out beyond what you can tell that's why we can talk of the grace of god the grace of god the grace of god every time and tonight we're looking at the message the immeasurable and the measureless infinite grace that brought salvation to man that word salvation you may think you understand you know, in the Old Testament, they had salvation. You read Isaiah, and it talks about the garment of righteousness and the robe, salvation. You think of the Psalms, and the Psalms talk about salvation. The salvation they had, great salvation, wonderful salvation, even before Christ came. And then, when Christ came, the New Testament opens up in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, 21. It says, and thou shalt call his name, tell me the name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And then John the Baptist, he tells us about that salvation. And it says, all men shall see the salvation of the Lord. And then from Matthew to Mark to Luke to John, during the gospel time, they had salvation. Salvation. How do we know that? 
because he told some of them the 70 when they returned he said rejoice not because the evil spirits have, have the kind of submissive to you but rejoice because your names are written in heaven if they were not saved their names will not be written in heaven they were saved he told them nicodemus ye must be born again even in his lifetime you must be born again born again salvation saved the same thing so in the gospels they were born again they were saved now when christ died on the cross of calvary after he rose again now we have salvation one salvation of the old time two salvation of the gospel time three salvation after the cross after resurrection the resurrection of christ now the salvation we have is the salvation after the cross the salvation after his resurrection look at your bible in first peter chapter one reading from verse nine first peter chapter one reading from verse nine it says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul is after the cross is after his resurrection and it says for you as you live after the resurrection of the lord jesus christ salvation is now available salvation in your soul salvation in your spirit salvation full comprehensive total there's one thing i want to show you as i reach that verse because it says of which salvation the prophets have inquired the prophets of the old testament of that salvation they were inquiring and they were asking and they wanted to know they actually sought they searched diligently whom what they prophesied about of the grace that should come unto you they searched they wanted to know the salvation of the future the salvation of the time when the messiah will come who are the kinds of people that will have that salvation it was revealed to them as you read on in that passage it was not for them but for us not for them but for us of whom the prophet said what do you learn from that those old testament people had salvation and you can tell by the lives they live look at enoch look at samuel look at daniel look at david and look at all those worthy of what look at isaiah and look at all those men and women that follow the lord yes they had salvation of their own time at their own time and then christ came he says woman your sins which are many are forgiven salvation he says son thy sins be forgiven thee and when the pharisees were wondering how can this man forgive sin he said which one is easier to say that sins are forgiven salvation or to say rise up and walk and he told the man rise up and walk and he rose up and he walked and when he said the sins are forgiven the sins were forgiven that means then those people at the time of christ they got salvation look at the lives they lived and the salvation we have now is higher is greater because christ has now died christ was buried and christ rose again and when we come today and we say lord i need salvation 
were asking for the salvation that you provided and he said it is finished and when we have that salvation not category one old testament not even category two gospel time category three after christ rose from the dead we cannot live below the level of the people that had salvation in the old testament that's why we're concerned that we really understand the salvation the grace that comes to our lives and so today this night if you are not saved yet you are going to be saved full salvation glorious salvation the lord gives to you today gives to me gives to me what kind of salvation do you want there are people that want a kind of salvation that they continue in their old lifestyle that doesn't even match the old testament salvation the people that want god to gloss over their sins and whitewash them like the pharisees whited sepulchers no change within no transformation in their lives they want a kind of salvation that does not even match the salvation people had when Christ was on earth. Neither do I condemn you, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. That's the salvation of the gospel time. And the people who say, I'm saved, I'm saved, and they still go on drinking the flood water in the gutter. No, that's not salvation. We have salvation, and you are going to get it today. Say, I get it today. That salvation that the prophets looked at and they searched for, and he said, When will this be done? And Paul and Peter, the apostles, said, This is the salvation which is now reported among you. And you'll testify of su such salvation in your life in Jesus' name. And so we're talking about the measureless, the measurable, uh, infinite salvation of the, the grace of God that brought salvation to man. Three things we're looking at. Number one, it's the, it's, uh, cal the Calvary, fathomless grace that grants penitence forgiveness penitence are those who are sorrowful for their sin the terribly sorry that they have sinned and they come to the father and you say i not we i have sinned and they want forgiveness from the lord penitence not the people who take, like those children, they take meat from the pot and, it, and they're chewing and their mother comes in. What's that in your mouth? I'm sorry. And keeps on chewing. I said, what's that in your mouth? I'm sorry. And keep on chewing. That one is not sorry. Is he sorry? Talk now. The people who have lived in sin before, who have done evil things before, and they, and they come to the Lord. I'm sorry. And they keep on sinning. I'm sorry. And they keep on lying. Those ones are not penitent. The people that Christ gives salvation to, his salvation. They're the people who are penitent. I'm sorry. And I'm really sorry. How could I have done that? It's unimaginable that I went that deep in evil unimaginable i say i'm a church goer i say i'm you know i'm a christian and yet i've gone so far when you are sorry like that you are penitent and you are saying lord all i need is grace all i need is new life and if i have that new life i will not continue in that despicable 
defining evil sin. Those are the penitent people. And today, salvation for you. Give me a good day, amen. Number two, yeah, the costly free grace. Now, we say free. We say costly. Yes. Grace, like any other commodity, any other gift you have. Gift. The gift to you is free. But the person who purchased the gift, the person who got the gift, and he came to give that to you, that gift free for you is costly for him. The sinner that comes to Christ and he says, I need forgiveness. I need grace. I need mercy. What do you come? What do you have in your hand to buy the mercy? No. I just come for grace. Free. Yes. But it's costly for the one who died on the cross. The one whose blood was shed. The one who said, My God, my God, why? Have you forsaken me? It's costly for Christ to purchase that salvation. It's free for you. And it's the love of God that makes it available for you and free for you. And if you know the value, you know the cost of that salvation, you'll not be playing with this, that salvation. On Sunday, I got saved. On Monday, I went back to my vomit. Then I come back the following Sunday. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. You saved me free. But I went back to the gutter again. Can you give me that forgiveness again? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. They say they are forgiven. Monday, they go back again to their vomit. They do not know the cost. They do not know the death of that salvation is free, but it's very, very costly. That's why you want to understand what it actually means. So point number two is the costly free grace that gives the punishable freedom. Look at that. The punishable, that the sinner, the sinner is punishable. And yet, the grace of God that caused the very blood of Christ is given freely to you. And that's why you want to so appreciate what God has done, what Christ has done. And say, Lord, their salvation, precious, costly, prophesied about that the prophets of the old they were saying when will this be given and we were told is during our time you are living in the best generation spiritually you could ever live give me a good day, amen this is the time we can have everything calvary has provided salvation forgiveness freedom new life eternal life, healing for our body, deliverance, dominion, total, complete freedom from everything, from sin to sickness to Satan. Tonight, you have it. And then, it talks about the third thing. The fullness of that salvation. The fullness of of that provision that we have. And the fullness is so full that there's nothing you can add to it. There's nothing you can take away from it. It's sufficient. It's complete. It's total. And when you come to the Lord and you're not asking for just partial sin, partial sin, oh Lord, give me forgiveness for last week. And give me chance, license, so I can go on the following week and 
do all that mess all over again. Then I'll come next week for another bit of forgiveness. No, that is not salvation. Salvation is the one that makes a clear cut division from all those things of the past. Look at number one. Number one. We're looking at the Calvary, fathomless, measureless grace that grants the penitent's forgiveness. Penitent. You come to the Lord. You say, Lord, I'm not worthy to even be here. And to look at your face and to see you. And to have your word coming unto me. That your sins are forgiven. But you invited me to come. And I come. And I need that grace. It says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you call tonight, it will save you. Look up at me here. You see me. I see you. I tell you in particular that tonight is the night of your salvation. And you come and you say, Oh Lord, here am I. I have sinned. I have gone astray. But I come to you so I can have the pardon you promised. The forgiveness you promised. The salvation you promised. Please understand uh, you know, sometimes in our loose language, we are traveling on the road. There was an accident. And miraculously, God brought you out. Then you come, you tell your people, you say, today I was saved. Somehow. But that's not the salvation we're talking about. What we're talking about is all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. And as you come short of the glory of God, if you died in that condition forever and ever, you are lost. And you go to the other side where the lost are forever. But, you see, I don't want to go to that side. That's going to be painful. There's going to be torment there forever and ever. And you come. And you're sorry. And you're repentant. And you say, Lord, I've gone astray. I've done evil. I've acted bad. And I've gathered such a habit in my life that even when I want to turn by myself, I can not. I need your help. I need forgiveness. I need freedom. I need grace. And then the Lord touches your heart. He forgives your sin. Because you came asking for that forgiveness. And you have the joy of salvation. The joy of a new life. The joy of a person whose sins are washed away, taken away. And you have the understanding that now you are one of the children of God. That is the salvation we are talking about. And what does it say? What does it say we ought to do to have that? If you read Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 5 verse 30, it says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree. The Jews did that. But that was prophesied that Christ will die that kind of death. But now it says him. Christ, the Savior. Him, Christ, the one who forgives, who will forgive you tonight. Amen. Christ, the accepted sacrifice 
and the final sacrifice. No other sacrifice will be acceptable unto the Lord. The goats and the rams they offered in the Old Testament that has stopped. All the things they brought, a lamb without blemish. Then you take it out of the flock. And then you kill it and put the, the blood in the basin. Strike it upon the lintels of your house. And stay inside there. When the angel of death will pass, he will not touch you. Old Testament. That's how they add their own salvation before Christ came. But now, Christ, the final sacrifice. Any sacrifice today is unacceptable unto God. It actually nullifies the sacrifice of Christ for them. But now you come because God raised him up and lifted him up. Is now at the right hand of the Lord and is made a prince and a savior. A savior as well as a prince is now the Lord of our lives. For to give forgiveness to Israel, for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sin. Even he helps us to even repent. You know, you when you are coming, am I a sin? <laughs> what sin have I committed? And it's the grace of God that taught us to fear. The grace of God that brought conviction. It's the grace of God that makes us to go on our face before the Lord. To say, yes, I realize now. And when you come before the Lord and the grace of God begins to walk in your life, things you had forgotten. Things you didn't even know was wrong. The Lord begins to remind you. He gives you repentance and he gives you the forgiveness of sin. I pray that will be real in your life in Jesus' name. When we're sincere before the Lord, when we come, when we know that we're not here for child's play, we're not here for a game, we're not here to gamble our life, our time, our destiny away, and we say, yes, I know what Christ has done. And because of that, Lord, I come, I come. And the grace of God will be so giving to us that the things of the past, everything will vanish away. Why is your image so far away? And uh, Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle received that grace to repent and the grace to turn to the Lord. And the Lord called him. That as you have been saved, now go and tell others about this salvation. It's like somebody fell into the well. And as he's in the well, he shouted, anybody up there to save me, rescue me, pull me out of this well? Because... It has to be somebody up there that will see the one that is drowning in the well. Save him from that well. You cannot, if you fall into the well, another person and fall into the well, that other person in the well cannot lift you up. He is there himself. It takes somebody up outside the well that will throw the rope down and say, hold on to that, and then he'll pull you up. And then you're asking, who is that person up there? His name is Jesus. I said, his name is Jesus. He, he, he never fell into that well of sin. Never. In word, in thought, in action, in behavior, in his, everything he did, there was no sin. That's why I ask, which of you convinces me of sin? And even those Pharisees, Sadducees, they could not find one thing to condemn him for. And because of the one up there, he never fell into the well. You are in the well 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why you are looking up and you are seeing Jesus up there. You are not in the world and seen here with me. And if there's anyone to save me, it is him up above. That's why you call upon him tonight. It will save you. I said, it will save you. Listen, somebody in the world is pulled out, is saved. Is he still in the world? I said, is he still in the world? What that gives us the lies people tell. They say, I am saved, and they're still in the well. I am saved, they're still in their deception, falsehood, and lying. I am saved, they're still in the well of fornication, adultery, and drunkenness. No, no. When you are saved out of the well, you're pulled out of that well and you're no longer there. He'll take you out. I said he'll take you out. Grace has power. Cleansing power. Washing power. That it washes all the stain of your past life. Washes it away. On the condition you are penitent. And now, the person up there. That threw the rope down, and then the sinner, the one down in the well, was pulled up. When he gets up, he's washed externally from the dirty water on his body. Because that the water there can contaminate his life and it, the corruption. Can destroy him. One, two. The water, dirty water, poisonous water, contaminated water that had gone inside him. For you to save him completely, you have to pump that water out. You have to find a way to take the water inside him, the bad water, the unclean water, the dirty water, and the water that is filled with germs and bacteria. You have to take that out of him. That is when the man can say, not just that I'm outside the well, I am saved. That's what Christ does. Sins on the inside. Sins on the outside. Common sins, uncommon sins. Open sin, hidden sin. When Christ forgives you, he sets you free. And now you have the grace to be an overcomer. Salvation. He'll do it for everyone in Jesus' name. And it's only him that can do it. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There's no name, no other name given among men, whether on earth or in heaven, whereby we must be saved. It is this name, this name alone of the one that died for you, that can save. And when you call upon that name, salvation has come. I said salvation has come. That's why the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 55 and from verse 6. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. That is, all the things you have done to offend God. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is thus. And then it says, he will pardon, abundantly pardon, as you return unto the Lord. Salvation for you today. Cleansing for you today. 
a new life for you today in Jesus' name. Another amen there. Point number two is the costly free grace that gives the punishable freedom. The punishable. That is from the lives we have lived. From the things we have gotten in ourselves into involved in. We merit punishment. We merit the anger of the Almighty. We merit the torment. Not only here on earth, but there in eternity. And then you come to the Lord, you say, I don't want to face the judgment day. And yet, you know, that's judgment day. It's appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment appointed by God is appointed unto man. Unto every person, unto everybody, is appointed unto man wants to die. After this, the judgment and the things the people, I don't want to talk about that now. I don't want to go to any place they talk about judgment. It's like, you know, the thief on the road. And, uh, you know, somebody in the alcohol talked to him, said, do you know there is a payday for what you, I don't want to hear about that. I just want to do what I do, and this is what I've chosen to do. There is a payday. And the law enforcement agents will grab you. And eventually, you come to the court. And the law is there. God has laws, too. That we need to obey. But you say, no, I don't want to. Well, the payday will come. And eventually that fellow is judged. And the judge will not be smiling. The judge will not be saying, whose son are you? Whose daughter are you? Um, Mr. So-and-so's son. Madam So-and-so's daughter. And you do this. Do you think this is right? No, sir. Okay, the judgment is this. And Madam so-and-so, mother, will not be able to rescue you. Mr. so-and-so, dad, daddy, father, will not be able to rescue you. When we go before the Lord, on that day of reckoning, on that day of judgment, everyone, everyone that have abandoned Christ, let Christ aside, appointed unto man wants to die, but after this, the judgment, if you allow the judgment to come without reconciling with God through his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, then from there, you're whisked away to that eternal place. You will not be there. I said you will not be there. <laughs> that's why we came. And that's why we're holding crusade. We're not holding crusade just to get your body healed. That's a little thing. You know, the body will carry the body here for about for a few years, some 80 years, some 100 years, some even, I'm told, they live up to 120, 122. And after that, the body is gone. But your soul, your spirit, that will live forever. Because that soul that you got from the Lord, the soul will never cease to exist. And you want to take care of the eternal destiny of that soul. You want to settle with the Lord before that final day of reckoning and the day of judgment. And so, as you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I know my sins are punishable. My evils are punishable. The things you have done that maybe no man knows. The things you are doing that maybe nobody knows. Or maybe they know, but you are untouchable by people. You are untouchable by, you know, people around here. And they know what they say. So, so well. 
How can we touch him? He is untouchable. But God is not afraid of his creatures. If you die in that condition, even though you seem to be untouchable here, there is punishment forever and ever on the other side. How can you escape that? I told you, but I'll tell you again in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, for all have seen the high and the low, the big and the small, the religious and the irreligious, the educated and the illiterate, the civilized and the uncivilized, the circumcised and the uncircumcised all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Think about yourself. If you raise your hand, you cannot touch the sky. You come short of that sky. Think about the tallest man in your community. Let him raise his hand standing up. He cannot touch heaven. Let him stand on a table. Let him stand or maybe climb up a tree. And from the top of that tree, he raises up a sign. He still will not touch the sky. That's what the Bible is saying. Wherever you are tall, wherever you are great, wherever you are wealthy, wherever you are civilized, you come short of the glory of God. And there is only one person that bridges that gap between the man on earth and the God in heaven is Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ forgives you and pulls you up, you'll get to the glory of God. That's why the Bible says that Jesus came that may bring many sons to God and bring us to glory. On our own, on your own, in your strength, with your religion, and with your tradition, you still come short of the glory of God. But now you say, I cannot do it, but Christ will do it for me. Christ will save you. And Christ will lift you up. And then he'll make you to come to the glory of God. Today. I said today. And the very next verse says, Being justified freely by the grace. Look at that. By the grace of God. It says now through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It now gives you the redemption. That redemption comes through the Lord Jesus. And it's already made it available for everyone. For you. For me. For you. For me. Done in Jesus' name. So as you come to the Lord, free for you, but costly for him. He valued your soul so much. He values you personally so much that he paid the price. And the songwriter says that Christ Jesus paid it all. Don't have any other thing to pay. That's why it says it's free. The grace of God, costly for Christ but free for you. And tonight is that night when the Lord will bring that salvation to you. Wonderful. Wonderful. The Lord do it in your life in Jesus' name. It tells us in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It says that if thou, thou means you, but that means you in the singular. There is you in the plural. There is you in the singular. It says, if thou, if you 
shall confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus over your life. And you say, I surrender, I surrender everything, all I am, all I have been, all I will ever be. I surrender unto Christ the Lord. Now, when it says the Lord, you cannot have two lords. And you say, yes, I take Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I also take a personality. I also take a spiritual deity in our community. I also take him as my Lord. You nullify what you said, that you take Jesus as Lord. If his Lord is the only Lord, he will not share the throne of your heart with another God, another Lord, another Master, but the one that died for you. And then he rose again and is now at the right hand of the Heavenly Father making intercession for you. That is the only Lord you have to submit, surrender your life to. And when you have him as your only Lord, as your only Savior, as your only master, and your flesh is not a master, and then Jesus as master, no, no, that will not work. Satan, evil spirit, demon, marine water spirit, your Lord, your controller, your director, and Jesus also, your Lord, mm -mm, that will not work. But you abandon all those other things, and you say, I remove my allegiance, I remove my submission, I remove my heart, my life away from other entities. And I make Jesus Savior, Lord alone. That's how salvation comes. If you claimed in the past that you have been saved, but the concoctions of your village that still the Lord. The tradition of your culture that still your Lord. You still carry masquerade and you still go about, you know, chanting all those things and you still go to those gangs and, you know, you, you do whatever they do. And then you are marking yourself, you are donating blood, you are making covenant with those entities. Now you are not born again yet because Christ will stand aloof. He will stand apart. Because look at this fellow. Demons are still his Lord. Those idols are still is Lord. And all those evil things of uh, magic and dark powers, that's still your Lord. And the gang you have joined and you have submitted your soul unto the gang. That's still your Lord. Uh, Jesus will stand aloof. You're not saved yet. You're not born again yet. But when you understand that now you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God the Father raised him up from the dead for you to save you. That's how salvation comes. You are getting that salvation today. Say, I am getting that salvation today. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, believe, not in your head. I want you. You know, in primary school where they taught religious knowledge. All that was in my head. Until it came to my heart, I wasn't born again. The thing must go from your head. Not just, yes, I know, I believe in Jesus. Say the son of God in your head. But what's your heart? You believe this is the only Savior.
That's when salvation will come. That's why tonight salvation will come to you. Because then you believe that God has raised him from the dead. And it says, thou shalt be saved. Did he say amen? It says, for well, the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Or the heart man believeth unto righteousness. True faith in Christ will bring righteousness. Will bring a change of life. A transformation of life. It's not a make-believe practical righteousness. Visible righteousness. Knowable righteousness. Verifiable righteousness. When you believe with the heart, that's what he gives. That's what comes with the grace of God. And then he says, for the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confession made unto salvation. And tonight, you have the chance to call upon the Lord. Your salvation has come. My salvation has come. Say it now. I, I hear the voices of young people, the older people. Use your baritone voice and say, My salvation has come. It will come even tonight in Jesus' name. Point number three now. We're looking at the grace this kind of this crucifying full grace crucifying full, full grace that now does something in, in us guarantees a peace in fullness the one that is uh, you know deep in sin it was a peace of heart the knowledge you have in the bible troubles your heart because you know you are not living by the standard of the word of God like a person who is born again. The fellow that is falling and rising for him, he doesn't have peace and fullness because he knows. Well, even if I deceive other people, they say, brother so and so, sister so and so. And they take me to be Christian. They know because of the defeated life you're living, you don't have the peace. But when the God of peace, when Christ, who is our peace, will enter into you and bring you peace in your heart, peace in your soul, peace in your family, and peace as much as it lies with you, you are at peace with everybody. What are you going to be fighting about? What are you going to be you know, kind of dragging with anybody when you're born again, when you're saved? You're not looking for what belongs to them. Even if they're looking for what belongs to you, you know, God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There's the peace of God. It will reign in your heart. That whatever torment, whatever turbulence is going on in the world, and whatever may be going on in society, when Christ, the Prince of Peace, when he enters into you, you'll have peace in your heart. And peace in your soul. Uh, you're not the one that is driven here and there by anxiety and worry. You rest totally on the Lord now. The peace of God, that's what we get when we give our lives to Christ. There is the God of peace. Peace of God, God of peace. After you have the peace of God, you get to God. You say, God, I read a title of yours in the Bible. And it says, God of peace. And I come for that. Then something marvelous will take place in your life. That's the reason why as you come, God doesn't want you to be a spectator. I am saved. I'm saved. Thank God I am saved. 
have the peace of God. Thank God I have the peace of God. And so you are saying, okay, the crusade is meant for them. It's meant for them. It's meant for you. Say, so it's meant for me. A believer is still meant for you. You claim salvation is still meant for you. You've been following the Lord. It's still meant for you. Why? You got the peace of God. Now you need to get the God of peace. I'm looking at Romans chapter 16 verse 20. It says, and the God of peace, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. When you understand it, you'll say a better amen. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Then it says, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Tonight, you've got the peace of God. Don't go away. You don't say, I'm all right. The God of peace will end time. You'll bruise Satan under your feet. Whatever pranks, whatever game, whatever gambling uh, uh, the devil is trying to do. When you come to the Lord tonight, those who are saved, yes, peace of God. Those who have been born again already. And you say, I want the God of peace to bruise Satan. Order my feet shortly, shortly, shortly at the moment of prayer. All those things they threw from the village. All those things, those arrows, they, 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 they threw from the village. You know you are born again. You know you are a child of God. But what is this? I can't live my life properly. I'm not committing sin, but they throw something in my brain. In my mind, look at all this confusion. I want to go here, but I'm going there. Those are their arrows, and tonight, all those sorrows will be shattered and broken. Now, look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the God of peace. It says, and the very God of peace, look at that, saved you have the peace of God. But now, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Oh, now I understand. There is some um, kind of initial sanctification. Sanctify you initially. A bit, you are set apart. But now, it says, Sanctify you holy. Totally, completely, entirely. There are people that carry salvation, salvation, salvation. How many years now? I'm born again, I'm born again. How many years now? You got the first entry into the kingdom. And you've been carrying that about. And every time God established my salvation, improve my salvation, purge my salvation, purify my salvation, strengthen my salvation, salvation, salvation. Now, the God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely, entirely. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Preserved blameless. Uh, you know the people, all these people, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And they do not know there is still another experience of the Lord. Blameless. That the Lord himself, the God of peace, make you blameless. But you know, Many people don't have to. They don't want that kind of thing. You know? They say, nobody is above mistake to justify their low level 
of the Christian faith. They say, nobody is perfect. Uh-huh. How about you, Enoch? Why are you finding the people that are not perfect and you are staying by their side? Wants to measure your life with the people who are average, who are mediocre. Wants to measure your life with the people who are so, so Christians. You feel all right. But, why don't you stand beside Enoch? Why don't you stand be beside Daniel? Why don't you stand beside Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And they see the promise of God that the God of peace, the God of peace himself, he says, he will sanctify you wholly, entirely. And I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. Give a good amen. And then the inspired writing says, faithful is he who has called you who also will do it. He'll do it in your life today. He'll do it in our lives today. Whatever you are calling the Lord for, the Lord will answer tonight. Forgiveness, God will answer. Freedom, God will answer. The salvation of the New Testament, the salvation after the cross, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that salvation the Lord will give to you. Authority over demonic power over disease, and over all those things that have been tormenting your life, the Lord will give you authority. Victory. 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 Neither do I condemn you. I forgive you about have the victory, the triumph to go and sin no more. The Lord has revealed to us what is measureless grace, immeasurable grace can do in our lives. And tonight, you've heard, now you are going to receive. I've heard, I'm going to receive. I've heard, say it. I've heard, I am going to receive. It's about and eyes closed. There's the time of receiving what Christ purchased for you on a cross of Calvary. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. How deep you've gone in the well, whosoever. How long you have been suffocating in that well, whosoever. How many times you have tried and failed and you know your inner sorrow because you are a victim, a victim of the tempter, a victim of the temptress. And you have been wondering when, how, when. How will I have the victory? Tonight is that night. Because it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be set free. And you are there, you want that forgiveness. After your penitent. After you say, Lord, I'm sorry, and you sincerely mean it in your heart, I'm sorry. And if you are sorry, I'll not go back to that kind of dungeon again, to that kind of well again, to that kind of defilement again. You're telling the Lord, I'm sorry, I'm penitent, I repent. Lord, forgive me, wherever you are. It's about an eyes closed. You raise up your hand. A new life is beginning tonight. It's turning around. Beginning tonight. Salvation coming to you tonight. Raise up that hand. And say, Lord, I thank you for 
the chance, the grace, the possibility, I can still be free. And I can have a free heart that is void of condemnation, guilt. Raise up that hand and say, Lord, tonight I turn away from my sin. I will not play with the poison, deadly poison of sin anymore. Raise up that hand. God bless you there. Just online and in any congregation where you are connected all over the world, tell the Lord and raise up your hand there. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You're standing up and standing up for Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Meaning your heart, though. Stand up. You're raising up your hand. I want freedom. I want a new life. I want this forgiveness that is valid. I want this forgiveness that only Christ can give on the basis of what he accomplished for you on the cross of Calvary. You're raising up your hand. Please stand up. While you're standing up, as you are praying, tell the Lord, I forsake my evil way. I forsake my sins. I forsake all the things that brought pain to the heart of the Almighty. And grant me the grace, Lord, I will not continue in them. Tell the Lord, are you standing? And to be a real child of God, not a fake, hypocritical member of the church. Thank him because his promises are yes and Amen. As he said, he'll forgive, he will, for those who are penitent. Come fully unto the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Have they gone home? In Jesus' name, we pray. Keep up that hand. It's not just your hand, though. It's your heart. But to indicate that truly you have come to the Lord in your heart, you raise up that hand. We're praying together, and God will hear this prayer on your behalf. Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you and bless your name for the promise you have given and for the grace for salvation that is now available. We know when salvation comes, forgiveness to has come. When salvation comes, freedom, liberation to has come. I pray for all the people that have turned away their, from their sins and they give themselves sincerely, honestly unto you. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Set them free. Set them free. Set them free. Free from their sin. Free from evil. Free from defilement. Free from all those gags. And free from the things that have bound them until this time. And let the Spirit of God bear witness in their hearts. They are now the children of God. And the grace for the children, the salvation for the children, the new life for the children, grant unto everyone. We well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will come and take down your name. 
The Bible says when you give yourself to the Lord in reality and you're forgiven and you're set free and you're saved, your name is written in heaven. We write your name here so we can identify with you and you identify with us and lead you to grow in as disciples of Christ in the Lord. Our minister tonight will come and lead us in this session. After that, I'll come back and the God of peace will bruise Satan, sickness, suffering under your feet shortly. I say welcome to you, to the kingdom of God, and congratulations. The decision you have made tonight is not just for this day. It's a lifetime decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and to go into the kingdom of God. Please cooperate with the counselors and workers who are around you. They are requesting for your details, your correct name, and your address. Please give them your correct name and your address and your telephone number. And if the place you live does not have a uh, name, I mean, a uh, number that, you know, with which we can locate you, give some descriptive identities, whatever will help the counselors to reach you in order to help you in your newfound faith. If your house is behind the school or by the side of a school or behind the church, around hospital area or clinic, wherever, any landmark with which you can be located, please give it correctly. And the name by which you are known in the place you live, give correct details. Give correct telephone number. The essence of this exercise is to help you to visit you, and to help you to develop as we come to you for discipleship so you can grow in the Lord and become a standing, steadfast believer. Cooperate with them and do it willingly and do it wholeheartedly. God bless you as you give your correct details to the counselor. And in all other locations where you are, please do the same within the country or outside the country. Probably you are alone in the place where you have listened to this message from the man of God tonight and you have decided for Christ or you are watching online and you just give your life to Christ. After the pastor's message, this evening, there is a link in your player there, gckhq.org slash connect. Below your player, click it and fill your form there so that we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. If you are listening via radio or television and you have just given your life to Christ, please send your name and your correct phone number and location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this telephone number. Please listen as I go over the number. Plus 23491. Five four 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 nine two six three. Let me call it over again. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. You can take a video of your own self and record everything. And you can send it as well. In addition, for those of you who gave your life to Christ 
yesterday and those of you who are doing same tonight there will be a special meeting tomorrow by 3 p.m. It's titled Lunch Hour with Jesus. For those of you who have given your life to Christ, right here at the Alpha location, I mean here on this school ground, Alpha location, we'll have this lunch up for you tomorrow by 3 p.m. And it's just the call behind me here. That's the place the program will be holding tomorrow at 3 p.m. There will be a special believers banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ during this crusade. From Sunday to this day and tomorrow inclusive by the grace of God. The banquet is coming up on Sunday, this coming Sunday, 6th of October, in all our churches globally. More details will be given to you. The time will be 3 o'clock. The pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. The Alpha Location Believers Banquet on Sunday, 6th October will be holding at the headquarters of the Deeper Life Church right here. Pastor Abraham. Pastor Abraham. Pastor. Please do well to attend. The Alpha location here will be having the banquet this coming Sunday, 6th October, at the Deeper Life Church headquarters, 63. Will be a street here in Ahoda. Those of you here, you know the street and you can easily locate it. It's not far from this uh, place. Please, if the counselors have not reached you, signify by just waving your hand. And once you do that, they'll see you so they can take your details. God had used the servant tonight to declare what this grace is all about. Salvation from sin. Coming out of sin, from serving Satan, to become a child of God through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has taken time to explain. And it's on the basis of this message, you took a decision tonight. Please make sure the counselors reach you. Don't be left out. If you are the far back, maybe you can move closer. And for those of you who are on the road, please come into the school premises here and partake in this exercise. Don't be left out. So many of you are outside there and the message had come to you very clearly. Don't allow yourself to be cheated by staying away. The Lord loves you. Come nearer and meet any of the counselors so they can take your details. It's a night of blessing and the Lord had made his love and his mercies and his grace known so clear. Come nearer. Don't stand aloof. I plead with you. 
the man of God had spoken at length. He had given detailed explanation. Let what you have heard tonight profit you as God expects you to make profit. Please come. Come nearer. Those of you at the far back, please come closer as well. Wherever you are, if the counselors have not reached you, come closer to them and speak with them. Give them your details. For those of you who can write, please write and fill the form yourself and give your correct details. Those of you who cannot, the counselors will help you. Please cooperate with them and let this night today, September 30th, 2024, be a remarkable day in your life. You always make reference to that by the grace of God. It was at the Global Crusade at this school ground here at Akoda that you surrendered your life to Christ when the servant of God preached. Those of you in other locations, please do the same. If you are in a secluded environment, like I've said, please click on your player and fill the form and send it to the phone number I've called. You can call the WhatsApp, you know, send your message, all your details, and by the grace of God, we shall reach you for more benefits. The Lord loves you. Don't shy away. Counselors, please, let's do our best and ensure that we take the details of the people that are standing up. And once you are through with them, they can sit down while waiting for the next program which is the miracle prayer. Once you finish giving your details, sit down. And those of you who are seated, who had already made decision, this is the time you begin to talk to God right there where you are. Tell the Lord of your need. You are here tonight, and you are not going back the same. If you have not given your details, Please do that. That's the first thing. The salvation of your soul. Coming out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. Coming into the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to enjoy the wonders of his grace. Please do that. Counselors, once you are true, let me see your flag or whatever you are waving. Let's do that. Let's be detailed. And also let's be fast. If you are finished with one group, please move further and attend to other people. While the man of God is waiting patiently for us to deal with this session and complete the exercise, then he'll come up to pray. Brother there, are we true? Yes, okay, thank you. Let others move ahead with what they are doing so we can, you know, wrap everything together. Before the man of God, thank you very much. God bless you. I can see your flag far to the right. Thank you very much. Please, just look around if there are others that are waiting to be attended to. Let's ensure we attend to all the people that, you know, rose up and willingly and joyfully tonight, they are surrendering their lives to Christ. Please, let's attend to them. 
our friends on the road, once again, I'm appealing to you, come into the school premises. Come and partake of the blessing of the Lord here tonight. Cancel us once you are true to my far left. Once you are true, please just uh, signify. Let me see your flag. To the far back at the middle. If you finish from your own section, please give a helping hand to the other group. Let's ensure we reach all the people that are standing up. Let's make sure no one is left out. This is the most important moment. The most important. The man of God are taking the time to explain the importance of this salvation. So clear and so direct. We have all heard. What the Lord Jesus did, the great sacrifice. Please don't be left out. If the counselors have not reached you, walk up to them. God bless you for doing that. Avail yourself of this great opportunity and blessing for your life. Our counselors, let's move fast. Let's ensure we reach everyone. We're almost through with the front here. Please, at the far back and the middle row, once you are through, just raise the flag. The man of God is patiently waiting. I think we should round up now. The man of God is here to give the miracle prayer. Praise the Lord. Let your hallelujah show that something is coming your way. Amen. Amen me, so let it be, and so it is. Healing, so it is. Deliverance, so it is. And then the God of peace will bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Between now the final amen the deed will be done it will bring sickness under your feet satanic affliction under your feet look at that to my right here you see miracle coming your way middle there i see supernatural wonders coming your way <laughs> look at that fellow there you're expecting your suffering pain. Release is coming your way. Those are the far back. At the far back. Come on now. Come on very quickly. Because the supernatural is about to happen to everyone. You raise up your hand. You lay the other hand on yourself. And you understand. The God of peace. The God of power. The God of purpose. The God of performance. That God that can never fail will bring that sickness out of your body you'll march on that sickness all those demons all those evil powers under my feet say it for yourself under my feet brain problem under my feet ear problem under my feet dumb tongues under my feet also under my feet cancer no you will not die of that cancer you you brought that cancer here to this ground 
that cancer will be under your feet. Whatever problem, challenge you have, you raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself. Your miracle time has now come. Your healing time has now come. Deliverance time has now come. After the final amen, when you hear that last amen, open your eyes, look at yourself, that sickness would have gone. We're ready now. Raise up one hand, lay the other hand on yourself. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the unfailing name of Jesus, I bring everyone here before you to the right. To the left, to the center, at the back, everywhere. Lord, I pray, manifest your healing power in Jesus' name. Those online, those over the radio, those watching the heat on the television, those on the YouTube, anywhere you are now, in any community or country, the power of God Come upon you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all sicknesses of whatever description, pain, whatever, touch them now, heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, brain problem, insanity, those who are lunatics. Lord, I pray in your power, God of peace, Bring that thing out of their head. Give them relief and release. And I pray that thing will come out right now in Jesus' name. Pain all over your body. You don't even know where to lay your hand. Pain at the back. Pain in the tummy. Pain in the shoulders. Pain in the, in the joints. Pain everywhere. Pain, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have HIV AIDS or they have venereal disease and the sin is uh, really threatening their lives. Lord, I pray right now, touch them. Cleanse them. Heal them. Deliver them in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have swelling in their body. Swelling any part of the body. That extra thing there, the Lord touch you and take it away. Any blood clots in the brain there, Lord touch them, take it away. And here, yeah, touch them, take it away. Elephantiasis in the legs, touch them, take it away in Jesus' name. So a pile, I pray the Lord touch you right now. Remove that pile. Be free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those uh, asthma patients. They cannot breathe. It's like, you know, once they get here and there, Lord, I pray that right now, asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. Deafness, be healed in Jesus' name. And deafness, be healed in Jesus' name. All that thing walking about in your body, walk here, walk here, and harassing your life. You cannot, you know, stay quiet or scratching this and scratching that. Wanting to catch that thing that is walking about. That demonic spirit, I command you, hear my voice now. Come out in Jesus' name. But I pray that every form of suffering, Every form of disease, every form of ailment, as you have promised, God of power, God of a promise, Lord, I pray, bring every evil sin, sickness, disease, infirmity under their feet right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Noise in the head, come out in Jesus' name. You are healed. You're healed. I am healed. Lord, confirm it in their body. 
over here confirmation online confirmation the lord has set you free you will not come into the bondage of no sicknesses diseases anymore in your life in jesus name lord thank you manifestation lord i pray there be performance and i pray everything will be so clear you got it thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray